Hey guys, it's Leah from Prestige Worldwide Medical Consulting. I'm a U.S. Army veteran, um, physician assistant, and former CMP examiner. So I wanted to come on today and do a video about um, what to expect in a CMP examination for IBS, right? So um, I've done a few videos like this. I hope they've been helpful. Um, this one in particular, I see IBS claimed quite a bit. Um, or chronic constipation or some uh, chronic diarrhea, some of those, especially related to Gulf War um, service, doesn't have to be. Um, I'm gonna do another video specifically on IBS and how it relates to VA disability at another time. But um, for now, I just wanted to talk about IBS um, and the CMP examination. So you can pretty much anticipate um, that you're gonna go in for a CMP exam. Um, it can be done. Sometimes the VA can decide to do certain examinations over the phone or by records review alone um, through what's called an ACE exam or an acceptable clinical evidence exam. Um, but if you're going in for your examination, if it's for an increase, um, they're probably not gonna, the examiner's not gonna be asked to write a medical opinion. Usually it's just to fill out the DBQ. If it's for a new service connection, um, they're gonna probably be asked to review your evidence or you review your history and provide a medical opinion as to is it related to whatever it is that you were claiming it secondary, secondary to, PTSD, depression, Gulf War, whatever. Um, but anyways, you're gonna go into your exam and you're gonna probably see either a nurse practitioner or a physician assistant or a physician, right? For this particular exam. Um, so they're going to, they should have your medical records, um, especially if it's for a new service connection. But you're gonna go in and they're gonna pull up the DBQ or have it, right? And um, this is something you can pull off of va.gov and look at yourself. So you can kind of like see exactly what the questions are that they're gonna ask you. Um, so they're gonna ask, um, they ask the examiner, they may not ask you, right? Has this, has this veteran ever been diagnosed with an intestinal condition, right? And so it's important to know that IBS doesn't have its own specific IBS DBQ. It's on the intestinal conditions um, other than surgical or infectious DBQ, right? So this is for IBS, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis, diverticulitis, um, but mostly I see IBS with this one, right? So, um, they're gonna be asked, what diagnosis do you have? Some veterans don't even have a diagnosis, they just go in and um, the CMP examiner can diagnose them, but I would not count on that, right? So you wanna probably make sure that you have your stuff documented before you um, head in, but they, I mean, they can make that diagnosis if they want to. So, um, you know, if you have IBS, they're gonna check IBS and they're gonna put your date of diagnosis, right? Um, if there are additional diagnoses that pertain, um, they are gonna list it there. So a lot of people have hemorrhoids related to IBS. They can put that in there um, if they want to, if it's relevant, especially if you have IBS with constipation, that type or mixed. Um, they're gonna ask to describe the history. So describing the history, they're gonna, um, I love journals, I've talked about this before. So if you have a good journal um, that talks about frequency, you know, how often it's happening, stuff like that, that's helpful. But um, you're going, <laughs> if, if your IBS is, like predated your diagnosis, you wanna make sure to tell them that, especially if it's a Gulf War thing. So you may not, you might've been diagnosed like last year, but you've been having the symptoms for a decade. So I would say that, hey, I've been having these symptoms for years. I finally had it evaluated by my doctor and this is what they said, right? Um, is, it conti is continuous medication required? for this intestinal condition. So they're gonna ask you, they're gonna also review your records. So a lot of times veterans will be on stuff like Bental or um, you might be on Imodium, right? Um, you might take Miralax, you might take a bunch of different stuff, right? So they're gonna annotate all that down, right? Anything you're taking over the counter, you wanna make sure you have that um, information to provide them as well, okay? Um, they're gonna ask, have you had any surgical treatments for your condition? So typically with IBS, there's not a lot of surgical treatments. I don't know, maybe if you had like super bad constipation and it was causing what's called a toxic megacolon or some other kind of issue, um, they might do a procedure, but um, generally there's not a lot of surgeries with that. But that's not to say there's never, right? Um, does the veteran have any signs or symptoms attributed, attributable to any non-surgical, non-infectious intestinal conditions? So um, they're gonna ask about diarrhea, alternating diarrhea and constipation, abdominal distension, right? Which is kind of like when it, your stomach kind of, or your abdomen kind of like blows out a little bit. Um, anemia, nausea, vomiting, or any other things. And they're gonna 
be asked to describe that. So you're going to want to discuss that, right? So it would behoove you to probably pull up this DBQ, maybe look at what questions they're going to ask, and then take notes about the pertinent information that you want to provide to them. I would not go on a big detailed history about how in 1974 you broke your toe, okay, because it's not related, right? So once we start going crazy, like outside of what they're asking, it just gets the exam really unfocused, and we want to just be very specific to what they're asking about, right? Um, so does the veteran have ep episodes of bowel disturbance with abdominal distress or exacerbations or attacks of the intestinal condition? Um, I know that's kind of like a tough question, right? So um, they're going to yes or no, and then they're going to sit ask to state the uh, severity and frequency. So occasional, frequent, or more or less constant abdominal distress. So this is why having a diary for anything is super important. You could probably Google IBS diary online and there's a good one that you can probably pop up and just start writing notes on, right? Um, they're gonna ask, do you have weight loss um, related to this? So if you've lost weight, make sure you're documenting that in some kind of way that's other than you just telling them. So you just telling them is fine, I guess, but if you've been going to the doctors and getting weighed um, a lot for the past year or two, um, maybe show those to them, right? Um, does the veteran have malnutrition, serious complications, or other general health effects um, attributable to the intestinal condition? Yes or no? And then they're going to be asked to check um, health only fair during remissions, general debility, or serious complications such as liver abscesses malnutrition or other, okay? Then, then um, th they may actually not ask you that because it's related to mal malnutrition, but then there's another section on this DBQ about tumors and neoplasms. So for IBS, you probably don't have that. So that section is gonna get skipped um, unless you do for some reason. Um, that's gonna be more um, applicable to some of those other conditions that can be done on the same form, right? Um, has the veteran, let's see, other pertinent physical exam, physical findings, complications, conditions, signs, or symptoms. So this is where they're going to ask about scars like they ask on every other, um, DBQ. And that's simply to open another, like, claim for, or spur another DBQ for scars if they're scars related. Um, Diagnostic testing, has lab testing been done? So usually there's gonna be some lab testing that's done by your GI doctor or someone else, whether it's a complete blood count or some stool studies or whatever, because IBS is typically a diagnosis of exclusion. A lot of times you may, you may get a colonoscopy, but you may not. So if you're not having symptoms that are related to um, like red flag symptoms, like blood in your stool and stuff like that, some doctors may feel very comfortable um, just diagnosing you with IBS based on the criteria um, that <laughs> IBS is diagnosed off of. Um, I think it's called the Rome 3. It might be Rome 4 now, but you guys can um, take a look at that, the Rome criteria for IBS. Um, after that, it's going to ask about um, does it impact your ability to work, right? So if it does, make sure you let them know. Make sure, you know, saying I have to go to the bathroom all the time and it, I have to take constant breaks, that's helpful to know. But things that are more helpful to know are things like um, have you had to miss a lot of work to go to doctor's appointments? If so, do you have that documented? Do you have like slips, like absences? And then you also have corresponding doctor's office visits, right? Um can your employer write a note for you to, that discusses how disruptive it is? Something tangible that is a lot more helpful, in my opinion, than just saying, I have to go to the bathroom a lot. Because um, that's expected, right? Um, sometimes I'm late for work because I have to pull over and go to the bathroom. I've heard that before, too, right? So, um, and that's pretty much it for the IBS exam. And then they're going to turn that sucker over to the rater. And then the rater is going to make a decision. So remember, the examiner doesn't ever really make the decision. They just provide a medical opinion if asked. Um, or they just fill out the DBQ, right? Or both, whatever. Um, but the it's still up to the rater to decide based on the review of the evidence um, where you're going to kind of fall on that rating scale or whether it's going to get service connected. I hope this was helpful. Um, please let me know if there are any other things that you guys want to talk about. I'll probably do an IBS video soon where I just discuss how it can be related to other things. And um, I'm going to get ready to take my kids to an escape game, escape rooms. So I hope you guys have a good night and a good day. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.